Located down on the coast of San Diego County is a community that attracts kayakers for its seven sea caves and paragliders for its long range of coastal cliffs. It's also a community for sea life lovers from having the smallest penguins in the world and thousands of leopard sharks that swim on the beach every summer. It's all in the wondrous community of La Jolla, California, also known as the Jewel of San Diego, the same part of San Diego where Dr. Seuss once lived for many years and published many of his classic novels. Today, you are you, that is truer than true. There is nobody alive who is youer than you. But there's at least one person in La Jolla today making another series of YouTube videos. Welcome back once again, everybody. My name is Chris, and in this video I'll be talking all about La Jolla's different areas, the history, historical attractions, and then in the second half I'll be talking a lot more about the coastal attractions, the sea caves, the cave store, right after showing you all some more footage first. So the first thing I want to say about La Jolla is that it is not an incorporated city, but instead a part of San Diego that attracts millions of visitors every year, is about 12 miles northwest of downtown and has about 7 miles of coastline. Starting at the end point is a coastal walk that's just over a mile long and has some of La Jolla's main attractions. On one end are the seven sea caves and then on the other are the tide pools. In between them are both the children's pool and the La Jolla Cove that I'll be talking more about later. Behind them is the downtown area that's also known as the Rodeo Drive of San Diego from all the luxury shops, restaurants with ocean view dining, restaurants with good decor, different luxury hotels, lots of murals to see, and public art all over the place. Above downtown is Mount Soledad which is just over 820 feet high and gives you 360 degree views of the coastline and nearby cities and it's currently a veterans memorial of the US Armed Forces. Going to the northern side of La Jolla is La Jolla Shores that's good for beach bonfires, other family friendly activities, and is where the kayaking tours take off to paddle to the sea caves. There's also two giant beachfront hotels and then behind them are a few blocks of more restaurants and small businesses. Within a short drive from all of that is the Birch Aquarium that has exhibits of all kinds of sea life including sharks, stingrays, seahorses, other marine life, and feeding shows for the blue penguins. North of La Jolla Shores is the Torrey Pines Natural Reserve that's popular for their many hiking trails with the different vista points overlooking the ocean and has the glitter port that's used for paragliding and hang gliding. Then behind Torrey Pines is the UCSD campus and then down the street is an area called the Village of La Jolla where you can find the towering white church of the San Diego California Temple and within walking distance is a Westfield Mall and all kinds of other shopping areas. Then on the southern side of La Jolla is the very popular Winden Sea Beach and neighborhood, and below there is an area called Bird Rock that has a small stretch of more shopping and dining options. There's also more public art, including the small colorful benches all over the place that each have their own design. There's also other smaller sized beaches, smaller sized parks, more lookout spots, and vista points. So now talking about the history and historical attractions, it's fair to say that La Jolla goes back to 1887 and was founded by a New York stockbroker named Frank Botsford. He bought 400 acres of land and made plans to develop La Jolla with a man named George Heald. Tourists started arriving in the 1890s from San Diego and Los Angeles by train after a railway extended into La Jolla. 
The cove area was a popular place to set up tents, and there was also the opening of the La Jolla Park Hotel in 1893, which no longer exists. Not many buildings from the 1890s are still standing today, but one of them is the Brockton Villa that was built in 1894 and was used as a rental home for many years. Today it's an oceanfront restaurant with a balcony that overlooks the cove. You can see lots of history photos on the walls behind the glass cases, and I also like their fireplace. They've earned a few rewards from Best Cafe, Best Ocean View, and Best French Toast, which I got the Banana Foster, and it's something I recommend to you too. Moving on to the beginning of the 1900s, La Jolla continued to develop with more buildings that still stand today, including the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in 1905 and the Grand Colonial Hotel in 1913, which was further expanded in 1928 and is currently La Jolla's oldest hotel and located in the heart of downtown. Talking a little more about this hotel, it's still very luxurious and conditions are well updated. You can find history photos all over the hallways and a small shelf of them in the lobby that also includes a fireplace, chandeliers, sofas, and is connected to the restaurant. There's a small pool area outside with some ocean views. No jacuzzi unfortunately, but that didn't stop me from enjoying my stay. I was impressed right away with my room that had lots of space with chairs, windows that overlooked the courtyard, pool, and ocean, the bed was really comfortable and then this was the size of the bathroom and shower. Moving up to the 1920s, this was when La Jolla really started to grow with more tours coming in and more hotels being built. These include the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club in 1927, which was called at the time the La Jolla Beach and Yacht Club. The Casa de Mignano Hotel in 1924 that's now a retirement community across from the water, and the famous La Valencia Hotel built in 1926 that's also known as the Pink Lady. The lobby has great interior with good looking chandeliers that's connected to an ocean view restaurant called the Mediterranean Room and has a pool area right below. More growth followed and new attractions were built in the 1930s. This included the breakwater of the children's pool in 1931 by a woman named Ellen Browning Scripps who arrived in 1896, had a newspaper business and helped La Jolla grow in so many ways. A few places named after her around town are the Ellen Scripps Park, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, the Scripps Health, and you can find a memorial statue of her at the Recreational Center on Prospect Street just outside of downtown. Fast forwarding to 1948, another legend who moved to La Jolla was Dr. Seuss and lived here with his wife for many years in a home near Mount Soledad until his death in 1991. The La Valencia Hotel was one of his hangout spots and the Scripps Park right below it had the tree that inspired the Lorax tree, which unfortunately was taken down by a storm in 2019. So now talking about the coastal attractions, the first one I want to talk about are the sea caves that are located just outside of downtown. La Jolla has seven sea caves that are believed to have formed about 75 million years ago and are now a popular place to go kayaking and paddle boarding. There's a few different kayaking tours that start from La Jolla shores. It's roughly a 20 minute paddle one way and the company I took and suggest is Hike, Bike and Kayak La Jolla. The only cave you go inside is the clam cave where the instructor pushes you in for roughly a minute. You get to see some seals and sea lions up close, have some people watch you from above, and your instructor will also tell you some cool information and history about the caves before paddling back. 
Overall, I expect the tour to be about 90 minutes. Tickets are around $100, and they provide helmets, life jackets, and they have lockers for whoever needs them. Now, a cool attraction just on top of the seven caves is the cave store that's open every day from 9 to 4.30 and is free to get in. You'll find lots of small gifts and souvenirs, including seashells, necklaces, and a lot more. You can also see a few of the cave's history photos on the walls and go down 145 steps to another cave called Sunny Jim. It's only $10 to enter and it only takes a few minutes to go down. But some precautions to consider are that the steps get slippery about halfway, so just watch your step and they also have rails for you to hold on to and the ceilings are very low so just watch your head. At the bottom is a viewing platform to take photos, watch all the kayakers paddle by and a good chance to see some more seals and sea lions. Just outside the cave store is a small viewing platform that lets you look out at the caves. Next to that is a small gate that leads you on top of the clam cave that I mentioned earlier and you get to climb down and watch all the kayakers going in and out. Also next to the cave store is a coastal trail that takes about 10 minutes to walk across and is pretty easy to do. You get some good views of La Jolla Shores, the Scripps Pier, and Torrey Pines. You're also walking right above the other six caves, so that means you get to look down at some more kayakers. So the next attraction that comes after the caves and the cave store is the cove area that's just a short walk away. It's one of La Jolla's most popular attractions and it's very crowded on the weekends. There's a lifeguard tower, a small walkway to enjoy the scenery, and one of the best areas to find some seals and sea lions. During low tide, there's stairs you can take down to the sand, check out another small cave in the corner, and you'll also find a lot of scuba divers and people swimming and snorkeling. You won't find much of that during high tide, but it's still a great place to watch some big waves hit up against the rocks. I also want to mention that about once a month, there's a bird whisperer that brings a few parrots where you can take pictures with them for around five dollars. Then right behind the cove is the Ellen Scripps Park that's pretty good size, lots of green space, a popular place for gatherings, and a great place to bring your family or have an event. There's picnic tables, barbecue grills, public restrooms, and showers. You'll also find lots of scuba divers getting ready and other kinds of entertainment. On one side there's free street parking, and then on the other is the coastal trail with lots of lookout spots and one of the many places to watch the sunset. The trail begins at the cove and it only takes a few minutes to get to the children's pool which is another top attraction that gets very crowded on the weekends, has another lifeguard tower, and has some more stairs you can take down to the sand, but you can't swim here unfortunately and they have a rope to keep people from doing so. There's also a seawall that you can normally walk on, but I think it's closed due to construction but it should be reopening soon. Also around here you'll come across different small business stands selling art and other small merchandise. I even came across a painter one time painting an image of the tide pools and coves right past the children's pool and I thought he did a pretty good job. After the children's pool comes more smaller sized beaches and coves. There's also the Scripps Hotel that's right across from the water with around 14 rooms. This is what mine looked like that came with a table, a TV, everything was clean, and overall was a big size room. There's no lobby, but just a small check-in desk in front of the parking lot. Then above it is a nice balcony that overlooks the water. Then every weekend they have a nice little coffee stand called the Kong Cafe from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's definitely worth giving a try. Past the Scripps Hotel is a lot of grass and a lot of green space that are good for picnics, hanging out, and getting some good views looking north. This is also where you'll start seeing the tide pools that you can walk on, see people fishing, see others going surfing, and it's another cool spot to catch a sunset. There's more lookout points, barbecue grills, picnic tables, another great place if you want to bring your family, and more street parking is available. So this is the end for my first video about La Jolla, and then in the next one I'm going to be talking all about La Jolla Shores, Torrey Pines, and so much more. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for video number two coming soon.